So they're what we're supposed to be. I did all of this an hour ago, put it all on the lovely screen and it all disappeared. So um, that's what you get for trying to do things yourself, I suppose. Anyway, we'll have another bash. But I was going for about 10 minutes last time. This time, I can't go for another 10 minutes, I don't think, because... Um, I might. We'll see what we can do. Got to go off sooner or later to uh, to a show somewhere up in uh, Kew. Um, so I've got to be careful. I don't... I'm late for that. But the whole point of this appearance today is this Sunday's readings in the Roman Catholic churches around the world, including the Philippines, where the Pope, I presume, will be saying Mass on Sunday, and the text that will be being used will be this one. So whatever the Catholics are hearing, I'd like somebody up there to hear what the Catholics are hearing so that you can make up your own mind whether um, what they're hearing should in fact trigger uh, an upsurge in social activism for good and whether it's like recruiting people around the world um, to do things on the dark side, maybe we've got an opportunity of realising that if we stuck to these, the best of Jesus of Nazareth, and I'm speaking only about Catholics in Catholic churches, well then in fact you would have a vaccine for the virus, which allegedly is nibbling away at, um, at uh, our lives, especially I suppose the Western lives. So this, uh, this is what they were going to read, if I lost the place already. John chapter 1, 35 to about 40. It's not too long. The next day John was back at his post. This is John Baptist, who was a young man. See, another young man looking for meaning. What am I going to do? His father was a priest in the temple in Jerusalem. Um, allegedly a humble kind of down-class, underclass priest because of all kinds of gradations, as there are amongst the rulers of the universe. And his daddy was, um, uh, and his mother, of course, back on his daddy up, were on duty regularly in the temple in Jerusalem. That place that has caused so much trouble around the history of humanity uh, since it was built, since it was pulled down, since it was built again, and since it was pulled down again by um, the last time the Roman occupying army in about 60 AD as we called it. So um, his daddy's on duty there and he for one reason or other said well I'm not going to follow in the footsteps of the daddy I'm going to uh, maybe join the Essenes which was a bunch of what? Ideologues spiritually driven, not religiously driven, um, and, and maybe even, I'll say later, if I can keep going long enough, maybe the, uh, the zealots, who were a bunch of young men, um, Jewish young men, who, who were prepared to band together and put up a bit of a militant struggle against the Roman occupation force. Now we've heard all this before on the news about uh, young men, whether it's ISIS or ISIL or Daesh or whatever other derogatory term some of us in the West are using. Um, these young men were a pain in the neck as far as the Roman occupying army was concerned. Now was Johnny Baptist one of them? I don't know. You've got to use your imagination in all this. Anyway, Johnny Baptist is down apparently on the River Jordan where they were meeting outdoors at El Fresco so that they could hold, I suppose, revivalist meetings. And there he is, and he's offering um, initiation into his movement, or the movement, for anybody who likes to take a step into the water. 
in which case he will pour water over them and they'll be born again uh, as Jews. He was more interested in reviving uh, authentic Judaism than starting something new. It will be alleged later, of course, that his brother Jesus, uh, not his brother, his cousin Jesus, was um, uh, not trying to, what, toughen up tired um, Judaism, but even uh, prepared to uh, start a new branch of Judaism, or even others would say, starting something completely different. Anyway, Johnny Baptist is there, and along comes his cousin Jesus, who was always on the lookout for, uh, for a bunch of people that he could maybe enlighten, inform about his point of view. Um, and that's going on all these days, it's going on everywhere, Middle East and, and elsewhere, where there are some key young men who in fact uh, are really determined that others will hear their point of view about the world as it is. So these guys, um, there he is, and he sees uh, Johnny Baptist, um, sees cousin Jesus approaching along the bank, gets a bit of a start and says, uh, there is the Lamb of God. In other words, he's, uh, he's using a term from the Torah, or the, uh, what we call, the Christians do, the Old Testament, because we think there is a New Testament, including the Gospels of Jesus. Um, and there is the lamb, you know, there's the sacrificial lamb, obviously, because the lamb was a sacrificial victim in Jewish uh, uh, rituals. Very important character, the lamb. So he says, there he is, intimating that bloke there is going to go through a hard time um, because uh, I'm going to invite him to join me, but if he doesn't join me, he's still going to go his own way. And the way I do things is uh, pretty, what, unconventional as far as our own people and his own family is concerned. Your Jesus won't be that unconventional as uh, that young man, maybe 20 or something because he's going to go back home to his uh, mother and father, he's going to uh, become a, um, a young tradesperson and he's going to uh, live a suburban life until he's 30 years of age and then he'll go out and start his movement for a better world. So it's that recruitment thing that I want to draw to your attention. He then puts the hard word on, uh, on uh, Peter. Um, not Peter, he's already put the hard word on Peter to join him. Um, he puts the hard word on uh, uh, Andrew, who is Peter's brother, and has um, been down on the river with uh, your John Baptist doing ritually cleansing things and um, showing solidarity with the John Baptist cause. Um, so, he puts a hard word on Andrew, what are you looking at? Or where were you? Andrew says, where do you live? He says, oh, come and see. So he invites the bloke to come to his abode. God knows what it was because he always claimed he never had anywhere of his own to live. So it might have just been digs with somebody else. Um, in true Middle Eastern style, I presume, uh, people uh, share their dwellings. Same as so many other civilizations have, but the West won't. Because the West like have little houses of their own. Um, and privacy is the most important thing, and singularity. Whereas uh, other cultures, in fact, prefer um, um, community, sharing. In the West, we've got kind of very, what, narrow idea of what community is. Um, we rely on departments of government. Uh, to be responsible for community building, whereas in other civilizations and cultures, in fact, it's up to every man, woman, and child. In fact, they have rules and regulations which startles us in the West. It says you've got to avoid this, that, and the other thing, which um, uh, we're arguing about these days about the cartoons 
and about Muhammad the Prophet, about how far do you go in uh, privacy and how far do you go in not offending people. Anyway, I'm going to give this to, I hope this one works, because I can't keep banging on for eight minutes every, uh, every other ten minutes. Um, but uh, we'll see how she goes, and you can tell me what you think about it. It'll go on YouTube, and um, we'll try again next week to uh, to maybe make some of comments on other current affairs. Anyhow, goodbye and good luck to you all.